Hey everyone, and welcome to Deep Teaching, a channel dedicated to exploring the world of education and how we can use tools and strategies to become better teachers and learners. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Notion, an all-in-one workspace that allows you to organize and keep track of your notes, tasks, wikis, and databases in one place. I'll look at why Notion is a great tool for teachers and how it can help you stay organized and increase your productivity. If you're a teacher looking to streamline your workflow and make the most of your time, this video is for you. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into the world of Notion. So what is Notion? Well, it's an all-in-one productivity platform that allows you to organize and manage all of your work in one place. It's a digital notebook, task manager, and project planner rolled into one. But why is Notion particularly useful for teachers? Well, it can help you streamline your lesson planning and organization, collaborate with your students and colleagues, and manage your coursework and assignments. It's a game changer for teachers looking to boost their productivity and efficiency. First step in using Notion as a teacher is to set up the account and the workspace. Now, there are different plans available and Notion Plus is what is free for teachers. However, your school is gonna to need to be registered with Notion to get this. Now, I've been using the, the free plan for the past year as I was only using it for myself. But if you are thinking of sharing and collaborating with other teachers or students, then I would definitely opt for the plus version here. Once you have registered with Notion, either through Google or I think it's through Apple with that, or you can just use your normal email, then what you get presented with from there is a sort of the first introductory workspace. Now, that's not what you see here. This is my workspace. This is what I've been using then for the past year or so to help me with my social media, just organize my life, my professional development, um, and just sort of daily planning and to do things. But one of the new things for this year for me was trying to see if I can actually integrate some of the teaching components into it. And that's what we're going to look at today. So you would normally be presented with a blank page. And what you see down here on the left hand side, this is what's going to be referred to as the sidebar. And it helps you to navigate through Notion. Now I have a home page here that I've made. I've got some templates and just things that I've been practicing with here. Now, what we want to do or what I would recommend anyone to do as a start is on this sidebar, you've got something called templates. And I think before you kind of start making anything from scratch, have a look here, because more often than not, in terms of what you want to do, there's a really good template for it. So if you want things like to do lists, if you want, let's say, docs for meetings, and then even from a student's perspective, you can get grade calculators, note systems, and furthermore, things like uh, class directories. So the list is pretty much endless. And, you know, there are a lot of people out there using Notion who make templates that you can get for free, or again, that you can purchase once you get to that point. But have a look there. And it's also a really good way in terms of learning, you know, how some of the databases work. Anyway, we're not going to use that. We're going to exit out of there. We're going to make something from scratch. We're going to start nice and simple. And the aim for this is just to be able to give an overview. So the first thing we want to do is across on our sidebar is you can either click here to add a page or you can come here to add a page. They do exactly the same thing. And you'll find that a lot in Notion is that there is obviously these shortcuts and capabilities of buttons doing the same thing. So I'm going to add a new page and it comes up as this. Now, currently it's untitled and you can get a list of, let's say, databases that you can add in as well as other things that you can do to customize the page. So for this, we're going to look at this in terms of teaching and I'm literally just going to call it that teaching. There's nothing I want to add into it yet. So I'm just going to click in here and I'm given a blank page. Now I can then come out of here and you'll see it appear on my sidebar click into it and I'm presented with this, this blank page. Now, what you can then do is you can start to customize and stylize your page. Now, you can travel up to the top right and there's these three dots, okay? Now, it all comes in default to start with and then you've got the different styles. I, I like Sarah for this. It kind of looks and reminds me of a feel of teaching. You'll notice at the moment as well, everything's centralized. I like a full width, so if you click on the full width, it moves everything over for you. And for me, happy with that, that's done. Now again, click off it, I just want this blank page. And you'll notice as we go through this, there's no other pages inside this yet. It is just a blank page. 
Now, the way that Notion actually works is it's something on like a block system. So as I hover over here, you'll see this plus and you'll see these six dots. Now, if I click on the plus, it goes through all the different types of blocks that you can add, very basic ones in terms of headings to tables. Then we get in terms of things like databases, which I'll show you in a little bit. There's different media that you can embed or copy over from your desktop. And then there's other systems that it works with notably for teachers, things like Google Drive. I think it even works with um, some other other um, apps and applications that teachers will use as well, but Google Drive being the predominant one. Now, here for me, I'm just thinking about what I would want from a teaching space to start with. And first thing I generally look at, if I'm gonna use this, is I want a to-do list, okay? Something that when I come into my teaching space, I've got this to-do list there. Now, we mentioned in terms of earlier about Notion buttons and shortcuts and things like that being to do multiple things. So I wanted to do list and I want it to be kind of in a bullet point. I'm just gonna press dash key and space and it automatically comes up then with bullet points. Now, if you do want to learn the shortcuts and I recommend it, it's quite a valuable thing. If you come down to the bottom right and click on the question mark, you can actually then come and click on the keyboard shortcuts and it will take you to a different site where you can then start to see all the different shortcuts and how they're used. And you can learn all about them on there. So I'm gonna start adding in some things that I need to do for my week ahead. So it might be plan Tuesdays, lessons, uh, organize appraisal meetings, and then send information for ECAs. So I've got three things there that I want to do, and I've got them in this uh, in this bullet point list. Now, one of the good things about Notion is if I get to this and I'm like, oh, I'm not quite sure in terms of I want to change that. What you can do when you come over here is you've got these six dots. And from there, you'll find that you can kind of turn blocks into other blocks. So instead of having a bulleted list, what I actually want is a to-do list. And there you go, straight away, I highlighted the top one as well, I didn't need to do that. I've then got my to-do list in a tick off, which is great. Thing is though with this as well, my to-do list actually looks a bit small, I want it to stand out. So I'm gonna go back to my blocks, and I wanna turn that into a heading. I'm gonna use heading two, and it tells me a little bit about it, medium. Perfect. So I've now got my to-do list. Now, other things you can use to customize this, you go back to these six dots and you can add a color, be it a change in text or a change in background. So just to help this stand out a little bit, I'm gonna give this a blue background. And it covers, as a column, the whole width of the screen. Now, other things that you can do with this to try and make it a little bit easier is you can add icons and covers. So if I click on here, I'm given an icon, but I wanna change that. So I can click on it, and I'm gonna just have a look and see if they've got anything in terms of teaching. They don't. What do we, what do we think of when we think of teaching? I'm just gonna go with the clipboard for this. It helps with being organized. So we've got that there. The other thing you can do here is then you can add a cover. So at the top there, it gives a random image and you can change that and you're presented with a gallery. You can upload images, you can link to images from the internet and there's this one there called Unsplash which is a bit like stock photos and you can search through there as well. So if I go see if there's anything for classroom, there we go, something there and I kind of like this one with the windows. So we're gonna add that one there. And what you can then also do is reposition it slightly. So you click on that and you can drag it up and down. Now you can't zoom in and out, unfortunately, but you kind of just get that sense of light. It can go down a little bit. It reminds me of when I was at school with the benches. I kind of like that. So we're gonna leave it like that. And I've just managed to then individualize this page for me. The next thing I might wanna do, I've got a to-do list from there. I'm gonna come down a little bit and I wanna make then a planner. A very simple planner. So one of the ways you can shortcut, if I press forward slash and then presented with these different blocks that I can add in, I can actually then type in the block that I want. I already know it, I want heading two. So even that, it's right there, heading two. And keep it all the same size. This is gonna be my planner. So I'm gonna have it as that and I'm gonna then colorize a background for it as well. 
This time, in fact, you know what? I'm just going to give it a gray background. Now, what we said previously is columns and blocks. So what we've got here is, let's say, uh, Monday. And the Monday will go all the way across. Uh, what I want to do, though, is if I click on the six dots, it's going to allow me to turn this into a different number of columns. Now, what I'm probably going to do is I want three columns across. So Monday, I can hover over here. I've got Tuesday. And if I hover over to the right again, perfect. I see Wednesday. Now, I still need Thursday and Friday, so I'm going to return down a little bit. I'm going to put in Thursday. And I'm going to come back to the six dots, and I'm going to turn that into two columns. Turn into two columns. Okay, so there I've got Thursday, and here I will see Friday. Now, what you can also do with the six, to this six dots is they're really useful for moving things around. So if I wanted to go this up, you can see the blue line where it's now moved to, and that would make it a singular column going all the way across. If I wanted to add it, so I wanted to add it next to Wednesday. If I drag it up here, you can see this blue line. It means it's going to appear right next to Thursday, right next to Wednesday. And now I've got four columns. If I don't like that, I can compress Command Z because I'm working on a Mac, and it takes it back to normal from there. So now I've got kind of a makeshift planner. And again, I want my days to stand out. So I might not change the actual size of it, but I might just give them all different backgrounds. So let's go with a brown for all of them here. Fantastic. So I've now got my days and what I would then start to do is just literally type in might be lesson one or I might just decide to do it as just a bullet point for each one. So I know what I'm teaching for each day in order. So and then I can tick it off as and when I've done it. So again, I can come in here to do list. Excellent. I've got that there. OK, press return it goes away. So you actually have to type something in there. So I'm going to add in my to do list for each one, bring it in here. Now, what you'll notice for this is for these, once you get the actual column in, it doesn't necessarily mean that the column follows suit underneath. This is obviously in terms of how you lay it out. So, what you would then do with that is I need to then add a new one underneath. I can then put in my next to do list, and you would have to then drag that all the way over to get it there. Okay. You can do it again, and, and with this one, you can just duplicate, and you can see the shortcut, which is really nice with things like this. So when you click on there, if I need to duplicate something, the shortcut is already given there for me. So press that, it will duplicate it for me. And now what I can do is I can drag it down underneath. And what you notice there is, again, positioning of it. I can then come to this one. I press Command-D. OK, if I highlight it, Command-D it duplicates and I'll drag it over and there we go. I've got that to-do list. So all you do from there, I will literally start writing in what my lessons were um, for each one and I've got then a makeshift planner. Now let's say I want to take this a little bit further. I need my to-do list to be more detailed in terms of when things have to be done for, let's say, um, and there may be a case of urgency, is it important? So. What you can do with this is you can take this information, this to-do list, and you can actually turn it into a database. And the way in which you can do that is, and I'm going to do it now utilizing some of the skills we've had. So I'm going to come up here and I want to turn this into two columns because I want my table to be on this side. So there's my space for it. Now what I want is I'm going to start with a table. So I'm going to forward slash type in table, and it's going to give me this table database. So rather than just using a normal table, I'm going to use a table database. Now, obviously, this has got all my previous ones that are on my entire um, notion, but I want to start afresh. I'm going to click on new database. Now, I'm going to give it a title of to do. Now, you'll notice that that then shifts everything down. Easy fix, highlight all of it, click on the six buttons and drag just want this one and then drag that all the way up and you'll see back into those columns now in terms of this let's say I want to start putting in some titles relevant headings for this so I'm going to put task and then I want to know 
what type of task is it? So I'm going to add in terms of type. Now what I can do from here is I've got a choice of the all these different types. This is going to be a select. Now if I click on it again, it's going to allow me to edit this property. So I'm going to say, I'm going to add an option and I'm going to say, is it a teaching task? Press return, get another option. Is it a department task? So something I need to do for my department or is it a leadership task? Something that as middle leaders, when we come together in our leadership meetings or something I need to do with the head teacher, is it one of those tasks? So I can have those there come away. And obviously when I start to fill this in, I can select what type of task it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna highlight that. I'm gonna bring it over to the task and I'm gonna click on here and it's gonna say, give me a choice, that's a teaching task. Now. I want to make the table and then give it some more columns. So I come up here, I'm going to click on the plus. Now I need to know the due date. So I'm going to put in due date, hit return. And then it's going to give me again the choice. This is going to be then a date task. So I need to know when this is due by. So I can come in here and go, well, if they're due for Tuesday, maybe is due date a good idea? Okay, but I can put that in anyway. I'm just going to click on the 10th and it will start to come up there. And I'm going to add one more in and I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with, probably call it status. Okay, and I'm going to change that. I'm going to click on there. So when you have your status, you can then edit the property. Now this one already comes with some in and I'm happy with those in terms of done, started, in progress. And I can just slide across on my trackpad or with my mouse left and right and I can see that and I can start to add these things in. So I'm taking my to-do list, kind of my rough, and I'm giving it now more structure, which is perfect for us as teachers in terms of knowing what things need doing and when. But the beautiful thing about Notion and the database is, is that you can actually then change the view. So what I can do to this is I can add, and I can now use a calendar. Now, because I have put this into such a small column, then it overrides it. So you can see it there, it's small enough. However, I can click on it, change my view. Now, the last thing I'm probably gonna show you then here is about linking databases. Now, what that means is I wanna put a new column here, but I want it to be that calendar. And now I wanna still wanna be able to see the table that's there. So I'm gonna forward click and I'm gonna type in, start to type in calendar. And I get this option of calendar view. Calendar view is gonna open and now I can link it to a database and you'll see that one here to do. So I can now link it and it will appear here. So I can, this little arrow means it's linked to my to do section. Now, what's nice about this is that when I'm in the calendar and I come to these three dots, I can start to edit the properties and what it shows. Now I need to know the due date. I want to know the status and I want to know the type. Okay, so I can then come out of there and it will show me in the calendar. I need to plan Tuesday's lessons, not started yet, and it's a component of teaching. You can also change the colors in these if you want, but obviously to stand out for you, this is just where we're at. So it's housed me there. So I've got my calendar, I've got my to-do list, and obviously I, I can work there. And it's gonna help me be really effective and organized. The problem is now is that actually the planner here, it becomes a bit redundant it's quite a lot of information on one page and it might just be better on a standalone page. So what I can do with that, if I talk, come over then to my keep going here, my sidebar and click down, you can see some of the databases we've made, but I wanna add a new page, okay? So I can click here or I could click down and what you could actually do if you wanted to make that new page is if you come in forward slash page, it will make a page for you. And there we go. It's already come in there, untitled. So I'm gonna call this play page planner. And there we go. Now what's nice also about Notion you see here at the top is I can then just go back to teaching, scroll down and go up, oh, there's my page planner. Now I can drag that and put that wherever I want. Okay, so I can even put it in my to-do list. So it's there, I click on it, I'm in my planner, press the back and back to it, okay? So we have all that. So all this here, and this is probably one of the limitations as we get from this, I've copied it, I wanna move it. Now, 
can't turn all this information into its standalone page. It makes them all individual pages. But if you copy and paste it, and then you can click into the planner section, you paste it, it comes out kind of as all one column. So you just have to then rearrange it. But in future reference, or if you're doing any further research into it, you can make your own template. But that's for another video when it, things are getting a little bit more advanced for you. Now, now that I'm done with that part, I don't need it anymore. So I highlight, I can click and I can delete that. And now I've got the making of a teaching workspace. I've got a to-do list. I can add into here. So anytime I add something in, I can then go, right, I need to organize my appraisal meetings. I'm going to add that there. That is department. I need to start doing that really tomorrow. So I'm going to click in the ninth. And actually, just so we know, they're starting tomorrow. I've already organized them. They're done. Come down to the calendar. It's already there for me. And you can move this around depending on what you want to see and where you want to start first. And there's obviously, in terms of tables and master tables, depends what you want to put in. You could plan everything out on here. I've seen teachers who will do all their lesson plans through it. For me, we're just keeping it simple to start with. But that's one of the things with Notion. When it starts, you'll look at it and think, there's a lot going on. It's really overwhelming. And it is. You're right. That's one of the downsides. But keeping it simple to start with and then just exploring and playing around with it. And the more you use it, you know, the, the better you'll become with it and the more you'll see what's able to do with it. And there are a lot of people out there who are using Notion. Go onto YouTube, type it in. There's a lot of good instructional courses to start with. And I will link some of them in the description below for you as well. So now when I go over to my sidebar, what I'm going to see is the teaching page that I've generated this workspace. And when I open that out, I've got all these different sub pages. So then if I go into the planner, I'm ready to start organizing my week ahead. Notion can make it easy for you to collaborate with your students and colleagues, but this is also where some of the drawbacks come in. Notion is a subscription based service, which means you have to pay a monthly or yearly fee to use it. Now, it is free to educators, but that appears to be at registered schools. If you compare that to Microsoft OneNote or Google, which has global use and is free for teachers, then it still has some way to go. Now, speaking of Microsoft, Notion's integrations with other tools can be limited, so you may not be able to connect with it at all of your apps. You can link your Notion account with apps like Trello, Asana, and Google Calendar to further streamline your workflow, though. In conclusion, Notion is useful for teachers because it allows you to centralize all of your materials and resources in one place. You can create a database for your lesson plans, keep track of your assignments and due dates with a to-do list feature, and even create a personal or class wiki to store important information and resources. Notion's integrations with other tools like Google Classroom and Schoolology can make it easier for teachers to communicate with their students and keep track of their progress. However, would I use Notion over OneNote for teaching? No. It's not as well suited for real-time collaboration as some other tools like Google Docs or, or OneNote. It can be more difficult to see what changes other users are making in real time, and I want the ability to write and draw like on OneNote, and that just isn't achievable in the blocks on Notion. I mean, ultimately, the best tool for you will depend on your specific needs and preferences. If you're looking for a simple and free note-taking app, well, then it's OneNote. However, if you need a more comprehensive workspace with advanced features, well, Notion might be the better option. It's a good idea to try both tools and see which one works best for you. Thanks for joining me on this journey of deep teaching with Notion. I hope you've learned some new strategies and techniques for using this powerful tool in your classroom. If you've enjoyed it and you want to stay up to date with more informative and helpful content, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Until next time, stay safe and happy teaching.